Hey everyone, I'm Izzy. This is Campari and Diamonds. So I like making drinks. It's pretty fun. And I also like drinking and eating things that are a little bit weird or unusual. So I thought it would be a cool thing to find some of these ingredients and make them into cocktails. So these are Sichuan peppercorns. They're used in Sichuan cuisine, which is one of the eight cuisines in China. Um, they're also known as the Chinese prickly ash because they come from the prickly ash shrub, which is not actually a peppercorn, it's not a chili, it's part of the citrus family, which is why these taste a little bit like lime. And they also have a numbing effect on your mouth and your tongue. So you bite into them and you start feeling a little bit tingly and numbing. So they're often paired with chilli because it's said that if you can't feel the heat of the chilli, you can eat more chilies. Um, so that's a you know, common pairing in Szechuan cooking and it also forms part of a um, five spice blend which is very commonly used. Um, so I thought I'd use these to make a cocktail. I'm actually going to use them as part of the garnish. One over there. And the main ingredient in this cocktail is absinthe. And I've also got some cream. Sugar syrup, lemon juice, and ginger beer. So this cocktail is going to have a numbing effect on your mouth from the Szechuan peppercorns, obviously. So I decided to use absinthe for this, this one because absinthe has lots of uh, stories and sort of myths about how it has um, hypnotic tendencies and that kind of thing. So uh, absinthe was actually invented in Switzerland and it is made using a number of different herbal ingredients, one of which is wormwood. Um, and that's how it gets its name from the scientific word for wormwood. And wormwood has um, a long reputation, uh, a long history of being associated with voodoo culture and witchcraft. So that's one reason why absinthe was a little bit kind of weird. Um, and it was very, very popular in the 19th century along with um, wine and brandy and it became kind of competition for the wine industry because it was known as the working man's drink it surged in popularity um, and so one of the reasons that absinthe has got um, this bad reputation is that the wine industry were well, like we have to try and eliminate this competition and there was also um, a growing temperance movement temperance being um, not drinking alcohol um, and we saw this obviously culminate in Prohibition in the 1920s in the US. Um, so before Prohibition, absinthe was banned um, in a number of countries in Europe um, and also in the US as well because you know, it was seen as you know, bad alcohol, it could do things to you, um, partly because of the wormwood and all of this propaganda uh, that was created by the temperance movement and the wine industry. Um, and so that's why it has its reputation that it does now. It's actually fine. It is quite a strong spirit. It has a, an aniseed flavour, a little bit like licorice, but it won't make you hallucinate. It's all good. Let's build the drink. So we start off with 30 mils of absinthe. Thirty mils of cream, fifteen mils of sugar syrup. So this is a simple syrup, which means one part sugar to one part water, and just make it white sugar. And then ten mils of lemon juice. Freshly squeezed lemon juice is always the best way to go. You can use a bottle stock, but it just doesn't taste as nice. All right, let's get some ice. So I've got my ice and I've also got my glass, which has been in the freezer. So this drink I'm not serving over ice, I'm serving it up, which is um, why it's important to have your glass chilled because then obviously your drink will stay cold for longer. So I put this one aside, ice in here, let me shake.
and you pour straight into the glass. The last ingredient, well, second last ingredient, is the ginger beer. Make sure you use a good quality ginger beer that has got a bit of spice to it. This is Bundaberg. Just pull that right to the top and it reacts with the cream so it creates a nice little foamy layer on top which is just delightful to drink and I haven't forgotten the Szechuan peppercorns I've grinded them up here so they're like a nice little powder and I'm just going to sprinkle this on the top of the drink It's not on the whole thing, just around one edge so you give people the option and it's a bit excessive, you don't want to cover the whole thing, okay? And there you have the comfortable enough. Cheers. It's on its own, it's very refreshing. And then once you eat the peppercorns as well, you should start to feel a bit of a tingling sensation in your mouth which makes for a weird but interesting drink. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see anything different, if you have a weird ingredient you'd like to see in a cocktail, and I'm gonna make some more videos like this. My tongue's starting to go numb now.